so there are a couple of things in which uh, data availability is like designed to solve the problem for you. So what's what's cause what's what I I typically like to explain this in terms of like the optimistic roll up model and the um and the the optimistic roll up model and the um uh well and the um so and the and the sort of validium zero knowledge zk roll up model, but like one of the most important things about um uh uh about these um systems is who can propose a block and who can verify the state? Um, so, in uh, in a in an optimistic roll up model, you need to have both a broad set of people who can uh, 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 who, you need to have a, as broad a set of people who can um, uh, you can who can uh, propose a block who can verify the state um, because you are you need people to detect if there is an uh, invalid state transition, and then in play the interactive verification game. Um, and then the second, uh, 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 and then the zero knowledge world, the zero knowledge proof provides pr uh, proof that like every state transition is valid, but you need data availability to enable other people to propose blocks. Um, otherwise you have like a, comp you end up in a situation where a single centralized party can censor. So, Really, the the core properties of a of a blockchain censorship resistance um, and uh, 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 auditability are like entirely dependent on this actual property, which is data availability. If you want to operate in like this sort of hyperscaled million blockchain world, um, and that's why data availability is like the fundamental problem of blockchains. Go for it, Mustafa. Yeah, so I mean, it's an interesting question because, like, it sounds very counterintuitive, and um, that data availability is like the core primitive that blockchain provides. <laughs> like, we've seen like you know tweets from Ava, you know, and like uh, it, on their team saying that uh, you know data availability is just some random problem. <laughs> it's like they don't understand they don't understand why it's even relevant in the first place. Um, so it's very counterintuitive to understand why if you be if if you've been looking at blockchains. In the old model uh, that has where Bitcoin has that Bitcoin has introduced, um, where consensus and execution are coupled together, uh, effectively. But where, where you have a model where consensus where the consensus nodes don't execute your transaction, then it be, starts to become clear why you know data availability is important. Um, so like the. the like before Celestia was you know, created, or before it was called Celestia, it was originally called Lazy Ledger. And the reason why it was called Lazy Ledger was because I was trying to figure out, like, what is the most minimal, minimum viable like blockchain you can make, um, or in other words, what is the least, what is the least amount of work that a consensus node could do for that chain, and how much, like, if we if we talk to an extreme. Like how much, you know, computation and work could you actually push to the end user like clients, and make it so that the consensus knows they don't have to do it themselves. And, and the conclusion that I came to was, if you wanted to take this in the stream, you basically like let's say you wanted to build a, a version of Bitcoin, you know, with this, you would basically just need a chain, um, where you can dump arbitrary data on it, and every single transaction is allowed. So imagine a version of Bitcoin, for example where invalid transactions are allowed to be posted on chain. Like you can steal people's money on chain. Uh, like how would that be secure? It would still be secure because you just insert a, 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 a rule on the user's nerves to say, we will simply ignore invalid transactions that have been posted on the chain. And in the case, let's say like there's two transactions that are trying to do, do a double spend and those two transactions are trying to spend the same coins. And then obviously you just ignore the second one. But in order to know which one came first, uh, like if you have two conflicting transactions, like in order to know which one came first, not only do you need ordering over the transactions, you also need data availability. Because obviously you need to know, you know the complete set of transactions that have ever been posted in order to know which one has, is the first transaction 
with a specific property. Like for example, which is the first transaction that spent the CTXO? So this is kind of intuitively why, if you look at it from first principles, why data availability is kind of a core primitive of, of, of blockchains. And this isn't anything new, by the way. Like even back in 2014, before Ethereum, you know, Bitcoin developers were kind of arguing about this and discussing this. And we have one developer, there's a, there's a mailing list post where you know, Peter Todd argues with Gregory Maxwell um, about what a blockchain fundamentally is. And, and Peter Todd was the first person to realize that you know, a blockchain is fundamentally a data availability layer. Uh, and he refers to it as a proof of publication system. Effectively, you're proving this to people that you've published data. Uh, 